cartoons are just over now. So. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I guess I'll take it away to begin. Uh, my name is Kara Joseph. I am the training programs manager here at Creative Manitoba. Um, Creative Manitoba strengthens, represents, and connects Manitoba's arts and creative industries. Um, our entrepreneurship training and mentorship opportunities teach artists how to sustain themselves creatively and financially. Um, Creative Manitoba is also located on Treaty 1 territory, the original lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Red River Métis. We acknowledge and pay respect to the ancestors and treaties made on these lands by considering all our cultures, traditions, and the histories of colonialism, dispossession, and resistance as we create and learn together. We would also like to acknowledge that our water is sourced from Shoal Lake 40 First Nation. I'll pass it on to Janelle to talk a little bit about arts accessibility Manitoba. Hi there, my name is Janelle Shaw and I'm the Executive Director of Arts Accessibility Network Manitoba or AANM. Um, so we're so happy to partner with Creative Manitoba to present this series of workshops called Creative Accessibility. Um, so AANM is a regional not-for-profit arts organization dedicated to the full inclusion of artists and audiences with disabilities into all facets of the arts community. Our mandate is to support artists with disabilities in achieving individual excellence, promoting higher visibility of these artists within all discipline and promote policies and practices intended to make the arts more accessible to all Manitobans. Um, just to give you guys a quick idea of how this workshop's gonna go, um, we're gonna start uh, pretty soon with Taz talking and at one o'clock, we're gonna take a 15 minute break and then come back at 1.15 for another 45 minutes. Um, so Taz asks that if people want, turn on your video, turn on your audio. You know, he, he works best when he can see people's and hear people's reactions. So please feel free to do so. Um, so with that, I'll just introduce Taz. Taz is a strong advocate for children and the mental health community. And uh, he's amazing. So take it away, Taz. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is awesome. What? What a, what a great introduction that was. I'm amazing. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> then later on, uh, my wife will correct the spelling and send it back to me. I, uh, so thank you very much for letting me be part of this uh, video series and, and to talk to the people here. The way I work is questions. If you have questions at any point in time, uh, anybody, just ask them. You can throw them in the chat if you want, uh, if, you're, if you're shy. Uh, or uh, and then uh, either uh, you know, Janelle or Kara will will uh, send them to me. I don't have the chat on because I have attention deficit disorder. So if the chat is on, I'm I'm doing a lot of this. I'm trying to pay attention. What's over there? What's <laughs> a little bit. And I'd like to uh, thank uh, right now. Tessa is the uh, ASL uh, interpreter. So thank you very much for uh, letting um, others uh, bringing. Uh, my joy to others, if that makes sense, right? Without the interpreters, uh, the people that are deaf wouldn't be able to uh, hear my jokes. Uh, it doesn't mean they're going to laugh at them. It just means that, you know, at least they can hear them and make their own judgments, I suppose. Um, I'm very nervous. I'm crazy nervous to do this because uh, I'm, I'm talking about accessibility and I'm an, I'm, I'm an able-bodied uh, person or whatever, whatever the vernacular is now. I don't know, is it able-bodied or whatever? I just, uh, it, it changes a lot. And I think if you have the right sentiment, it doesn't matter the words that you use as long as they're not offensive, right? I used to be a bouncer, uh, but now they would call me an intoxicated uh, patron transferal technician. So uh, it's all, uh, I, think if the, I think if the government would spend less time uh, figuring out uh, vernacular and spend that same money on widening doorways and uh, maybe making some ramps and... Uh, putting proper, uh, you know, braille and, and uh, bigger letters and things on, that would be great. But no, they, uh, they don't. So if elected, was what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny uh, it, talking about the ASL. Uh, I always thought it was uh, hearing impaired. And I kept saying hearing impaired because, you know, the people say, well, don't say blind because it's, it's mm. visually impaired. I go, but it's, it's called CNIB and the last word is blind. So I get confused, right? So I would, I, on behalf of everybody that stumbles and fumbles for the right words, um, I hope you understand uh, what we call with my boys, generals and tents. And uh, it, generals and tents 
is just because my <laughs> youngest one couldn't say generous intent. So if somebody is 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 um, says something that's incorrect, please correct them. Or if they you know if they misgender you and it's not intentional, or if they say the word dude and you're you know, you're not a dude and, and, and maybe see where it's coming from before you get upset with them. If they say it two or three times, then of course you're, I mean, I'm not telling you who to get upset with, but I just think if we could um, approach it with as much kindness as we can, I think that would make a, a big difference, right? I think a lot of people would be, um, would benefit from that, including the people that maybe were getting upset when they just realized that, uh, you know, because I, I remember I was doing a huge convention and a majority of the people uh, were either deaf or or hard of hearing and i said uh, i said uh you know i said you know hearing impaired and uh <laughs> they, they just, just stopped for a second and they you know and they and they told me right they said no no we we're deaf we we're called deaf and i said oh so i guess that just makes the government uh hearing impaired <laughs> 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 and i got a lot of this i got a lot of that and it's what <laughs> <I made. laughs> i uh so I'm going to stumble and fumble through this because that's what I do. I am not. Uh, I'm not a person that can focus very well. I am also not a person that can follow a script very well. So hang on, get comfy. We got about an hour and a little bit, and uh, we go. I love this I like that. Hang on, get comfy. See some of the some of the um, some of the. I, I love watching the ASL interpreters because I, I learn new things and and some things like hang on. Of course, that's hang on. But then, the, then funny is this, and I'm like, I don't know, I don't, like, well, I don't know why that would become funny. Like this is a, that would to me is like you're lying because your nose is going. So I don't know, <laughs> but I do know turtle. That, I know turtle. That's that's the only one I know. Uh, it's only because they did a commercial, and I said I had to go. It was for it was for turtles at the candy. I went, mm, I love turtles, right? And that's all I know. That's all I I know. I, I try very hard. Gordon Weeb, uh, who of course uh, many in the uh, deaf community and and hard of hearing will know, uh, is a friend of mine, and we have our own little ASL shorthand. And there's just a lot of it going. I don't know what you're trying to say. Right? So, <laughs> This is this is, I don't do ASL and and he can't read my handwriting so sometimes it's just a lot of quiet fishing. <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> so my history uh, is 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 a little. I came from a very. Uh, I, I I don't want to say this because very. How do I say this? I'll tell you some stories and you're not allowed to judge my parents because mm -hmm. judging is for the creator and little children, right? So my parents were wonderful human beings. They were crazy, popular, and amazingly funny individuals, incredibly uh, polar opposite when it came to parents. They, they had no, uh, no, uh, uh, they didn't know how to be parents. They were terrible, terrible parents. And uh, I always said, you know, they wanted me to be an only child, but they had my sister first. So, um, <laughs> but, uh, the, uh, my, my young son, Weebies, and I call him Weebies because his shoulders are as big as mine. He's 14 years old. And I went to give him a, I went, he said, Dad, uh, help me with my back. And I tried to, and I was trying to reach, and I had to reach all the way around his shoulders and I could barely touch and I had to pick him up and, and I went, oh my gosh, your shoulders are huge. And he said, or your belly's bigger than you thought. Because <laughs> I didn't get close, right? so. And, uh. So I, 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 like I said, and, and Janelle and, and I have had a, a couple of meetings with my wife and I and, and about how uncomfortable I am trying to talk about accessibility when I feel that there's no, I, that I feel like I've not ever been denied accessibility, right? But mm -hmm. as I went through, I realized that there, there are some things that, uh, you know, uh, with the world in general uh, will judge. And I think when things aren't accessible, it's because they're judging you on some level and i don't mean it badly i just mean they they you either get judged in this world or you got for you get forgotten mm. right and it seems like the ones with the loudest voices are the ones that get the the attention for positive or negative right so you know somebody like an advocate like like, like uh, all of us on here are an advocate for either accessibility or or mental health or children or all three right and um and but there are people that are very negative and and we we listen to those as well it's just uh it's both ears so i think <laughs> what i'm going to talk about is that i i have lots of uh i have a few stories that i want to tell you where i realized 
how blind I was to uh, the uh, the needs of uh, of more accessible things. I have a friend named Chris Fonseca, very very funny comedian, very funny comedian. Uh, you know, lives uh, lives his life uh, commuting in a wheelchair. He can walk uh, short. He's got CP, so he can walk short uh, distances. But it's just it doesn't it doesn't work for him. So you know, his shoes are his chair, right? And uh, I said, listen, you got your 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 chair, and, and I got my shoes. And he said, yeah, but my chair gets used a lot more than your runners. I'll tell you that straight out, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that that was one of the first things that we we that's the one of the first things we 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 did as 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 when we first met it was we started teasing each other. And uh, I was uncomfortable teasing him about, you know, the things he can do in his chair and his <laughs> limitations or whatever. He said, no. He says, why would you treat anybody else uh, differently, right? If you, were, if you and I were best friends, would we teach each other? Would you, would you tease me if I had red hair or, and I would tease you about being bald? I said, yeah. He goes, so why, <laughs> why, why lay back, right? <laughs> and and it, was a, it was a great conversation because as a child, I was always told, eyes front, you know, <laughs> mind your manners don't ask questions. Don't look at that person. Well, I was curious. I, I met a fellow that didn't have any legs and I was curious, where are your legs? And I went and asked him, where are your legs? And my father grabbed me by my ear and was dragging me away. And the fellow in the chair said, no, no, what are you doing? He asked a legitimate question. He had lost his legs as a child when he tried to crawl under a train. And so uh, two things I learned that day is that, that it's okay to ask questions when you're curious, right? And children are curious. Children are children have no filter, and that's sort of what makes life great about it. I mean, I was uh, at a, a school a while ago, and this little girl looked, goes, "Where's your hair?" I said, "My hair." She goes, "Your hair." She goes, "Where's where's your hair?" I go, "It fell off." She goes, "Did it fall off or did it get sucked in?" I go, "Why would you think it got sucked in?" She goes, "Because there's a lot of it coming out of your nose." <laughs> okay that's the best time <laughs> nose hairs? That's, that's nose hair that's also I, I, was, I would assume that was a sign for Lanny McDonald and Walrus uh, oh, oh this is Walrus yes. oh I'm learning so much stuff <laughs> I have a note right here that says, do not uh, bring attention to the ASL interpreters. I'm, already <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, you know, and I said, well, there's a lot of it coming out of your nose. And I said, oh, really? She goes, yeah, it comes out your one nose hole, goes around your whole face, goes up here in the nose hole. And I said, oh, and you got a booger beard, booger beard. You got a booger beard, booger beard, booger beard. And I just went, really? I'm here to talk to you about bullying. She goes, <laughs> <laughs> We already know how to do that here. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, how about not bullying? And so he says, uh, she goes, yes, yeah, stop, stop, everybody, stop it. Stop, stop bullying. The fat guy wants to talk about bullying. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I'm heavy too. The other day I was digging around on my belly button looking for lint. I, I found a skidoo right? So I know. <laughs> but, uh, and so Chris, uh, I learned two things from asking that fella, that it's okay to ask questions. Uh, probably time and place is important. I never, I, I didn't learn that. I'm 55. I probably will learn that soon. Uh, time and place. And also, uh, I never, ever played around trains again. Right? And it was learning on, on a couple levels. And so I, I'm, I'm always curious, right? I'm not curious uh, uh, anymore about, you know, if you want to tell me a story that's lovely, um, I think as an adult, I, 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 I lost my, I sort of lost my ability to uh, just, you know, ask questions, right, uh, that I think are going to, like, I never want to embarrass anybody. So if somebody wants to tell me, you know, what, what, what their ailment is, or why they're in a chair or whatever, that's, I, I find that fascinating, because I find the human body fascinating. And I find the brain fascinating, because for something that runs your body, it could sure be an asshole to you, really. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. And I maybe I should have said, you know, asshole, but there, I said it three times just to <laughs> you know, people have to do it. Um, but uh, the yes. I'll make sure to mark the recording as um, not appropriate for children. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. I didn't realize kids were, well, do you want me to just do it again? We can just edit that part. No, out. <laughs> yeah, I'll just keep oh, no. going. It's fine. <laughs> I'm teasing you. Oh, good. See, I love being teased. And, 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 then, and then that just, to me, teasing is a way 
uh, it's, it's a form of acceptance, right? And, but, and, and there's a fine line between yes. teasing and, and making fun of. Teasing is, you know, uh, you know, teasing, if Janelle and I were teasing each other, <clears throat> because we have a mutual love for each other. And I'm not trying to make her feel bad. And she's trying not to make me feel bad. And we sort of know where the line is. We, we, often, we won't with new people until that line is drawn. Right. But I never make fun of somebody because why is that? I mean, in school I did because that's we, we, we knew no different. Right. Mm -hmm. See, with all my my all my uh, undiagnosed mental health issues as a child. Right. What we call invisible disabilities or whatever, instead of uh, challenges. Right. And my challenge was paying attention because I have attention deficit ADHD, ADD. I can't just say ADD without saying attention deficit disorder. Because, you know, many years ago, a lady yelled out, that's an alarm system. I'm like, what? <laughs> ADD is an alarm system. I said, no, that's ADT. She goes, what's the difference? <laughs> you don't want attention deficit disorder alarms. I'll tell you that straight up. Somebody, <laughs> somebody in my house, he's got a knife. I got a blue bike. Huh, my dog's name is Kevin. Bye, I gotta go see my auntie. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> when, when I met Fonzi, Fonseca, I learned very quickly that it's, um, it's okay to tease, right? Lovingly. It's okay to ask questions. And then after having a friend that's, uh, you, know, uh, you know, wheels, uh, you know, his mo mode of transportation is, 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 a, is, a, is a wheelchair. And even then, I didn't, uh, right there, I just stumbled over because uh, we're so afraid of, of saying the wrong thing that we will shut down and ignore this, the problem, right? We won't, we won't move forward. That's where you and I differ a little bit because I'll just, it, you just correct me, right? And if anybody mm -hmm. on here, if I say something that, that is not what's, what's appropriate, right? It's like saying little person or midget, like some, some little people like little people and some people, they like that other word and, 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 and you don't know, mm -hmm. right? So, if I'm talking even during this, or if I'm talking to you, or if you see on stage or you see a TV appearance, just send me an email and just be kind about it going, hey, Tazzy, listen, you know what? That's not the right vernacular anymore. That's not the right words we use because it does change on a regular basis. And if you're not living uh, in, that, uh, in that world, you don't know, right? And, and it breaks my heart when I hurt people's feelings. And I, and I, and I, cause I, I, I am a big softy. I really am. I look, I kind of look, uh, well, I look like, right now, I look like Fred Penner if he collected money for the Irish mob. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, um, I'd gig. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I think the other thing we have to understand, too, is about, um, I think society would be better if we weren't getting angry for others. Um, because, you know, if they're going to get angry, they'll let you know they're angry. Right. And there, and sometimes there's a great song called follow uh, your arrow. And mm -hmm. I can't remember the name who, who, uh, who uh, wrote the song, but there's a, there's a, a great line in there. If you, if you don't drink or approve in the moment you have a drink, you're an alcoholic. Right. So somebody out there is always going to um, no matter what you do, right or wrong. You know, here's an example of that. I heard back from one of my best friends, who's a comedian, uh, Taz, you want to hear a story? I said, of course I do. Well, these, this one fellow thought you didn't like him because you keep, and, and, and he goes, well, why, does, why, do, why do you think Taz doesn't like you? Well, because he keeps teasing me all the time. And Tim Nutt, who's the comedian, said, no, that's, uh, that's how Taz shows love. That's how he does. You, you tease him and we show love. And the other comedian said, oh, no. And he goes, what? He goes, Taz has never said anything to me. So there's no, there's no winning, right? <laughs> You know, I, uh, oh, Casey. Yeah, Casey, that's a follow your arrow. Thank you, Janelle. Um, so we're doing, a, Chris and I are doing a, 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 sh a, some, a, a number of shows together. He's very funny. And he, he brings, he likes to call Tony, his cousin, his handler. Because, you know, somebody to push his chair. And, and I go, really? Or is it was just so that Tony can come, uh, you know, hang out yeah. with you? Because so I can, you know, I can run my chair. We were at an event one time and, and Chris says, can you, uh, would you help me go to the washroom? And I asked him, what does that mean? He goes, well, sometimes I can't work my fly. And I'm like, okay, whatever. It was, it doesn't bother you. I said, no, I have a friend named Alvin Law who, who's born with no arms and, and he often needs help with that. There's nothing, 
weird about that at all to me, right? So Chris, we go to we go to find the uh, the uh, accessible bathroom, and uh, it's up a flight of stairs, a small <laughs> flight, as the manager liked to point out. Um, and uh, so it, it's 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 one two three stairs, and then a landing, and then the doorway, and then the washroom, right? So I. Chris goes before you before you uh, help me up there. Go check and make sure it's actually. Oh yeah, for sure. Go through, and oh, big washroom. Great. I said, yeah, it's, it's great. You can wheel reel around in there, not a big deal. Okay, we get up there, and uh, the door is probably twenty nine inches or thirty inches. So we can't we can't get the can't get the chair through. So Chris goes, uh, Chris go. You know, I help him. You know, I help him walk and we, we go to the washroom and come back in a chair and come down and he says can I I, I have to say something I said yeah, of course you do I, I said and he goes will you back me up and I'm like oh I don't know if you think there's going to be a fight I don't know what you mean if you back me up <laughs> do you want me to sing when you hey you know if he says the, the door is too little I'm like the door is too little I don't know if you know, he means back him up right and uh Cheryl that's exactly how I sing by the way that's perfect um so he calls the, the, the server over and um, he goes, I have to go to the washroom. And she goes, okay. He goes, no, I, I have to pee, but I, it, it's hard for me to do that. He goes, she said right away, she's like, why you're being gross. This is wrong. What are you, what are you talking about? And of course, taken out of context, which, which she did. And, and in all fairness, there was no context given. She goes, I'm going to go get my manager. And we were like, that's what we want you to do. Go get your manager. So we get the manager over and uh, he says, uh, I hear you being rude. Uh, we're going to probably ask you to leave. You're being very rude to our, our serving staff. And we said, no, we just said that he has to go to the washroom. Well, that's, that's something that's very private. You don't have to say that yet. Don't have to be. And he go, I said, no, but he's in a, he's in a chair. He's, he needs one that's wheelchair accessible. He goes, we have that. I said, can you point where that is? And Chris is laughing. And the, he goes, just up those stairs. Oh, yeah. He goes, yeah, but I know. Uh, the, the, the city said we, it, it was perfect. They, they signed off on it because it's a small, it's small stairs and then a, and then a, and then a, and then a, like a plateau. I said, yes. Right. And Chris said, and right away, and the part I forgot about this is the reason I was talking for Chris is he got very angry because Chris talks with CP. So his speech is very, uh, you know, and he's like, uh, and he goes, well, your friend's hammered, <laughs> right? Your friend is drunk. And I, that's when I said, I said to Chris, goes, Tazzy, can you handle this? Because he was getting frustrated. And, and sometimes when Chris gets, Chris gets frustrated, it's harder for him to talk. Mm. And I, when I get frustrated, it's easier for me to say so. <laughs> so I just said, no, he's not drunk. He's got cerebral palsy. And you could see the guy try to Google in his head cerebral palsy, right? Like he could just, uh, da, da. but he obviously didn't know about that. So mm -hmm. there you go. We just sort of, we just sort of let that one go. And so he said, well, what's the problem? How come you can't get up those stairs and through that door? And Chris said, because I'm not a transformer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> which made me, which made me laugh. And, and uh, the, he said, and the guy, and the, the fella didn't have a clue that, you know, the door is, the door is, you know, the, the city said it was okay. Well, the city's wrong. I don't know which inspector came or if you just sent them pictures or whatever, but you can't get through a, a, a less than 30 inch door. I don't know what, I don't know what, it, I think it's 36 or 34. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but you know what, when we, in all fairness, I've been back since and that doorway is open and they've, they've created a, they put a, they put a, a ramp on the one side, uh, except... <laughs> The ramp comes right close to a wall and there's only probably about two feet to try to turn the chair around. So there's, it, it, there was no winning in that situation. Right. Mm -hmm. But what bothered me about that situation is, 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 is the, was the, um, the attitude of the staff and the fact that the city signed off on it. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, this, this was a, a, a city in the, in, 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 I think it was Calgary. I don't remember, but you know, it's, it's, I, I would assume it should be universal. And if it's not universal, perhaps it should be universal. <laughs> right. 
it's just like putting uh, my my friend who's visually impaired uh he asked me if i could come and help him find his room he says there's braille there's braille on the on the on the doors but not all in the same space same place the braille the braille uh the braille uh uh sign was sometimes under the door or not under the door they'd be very i don't know what's going on here uh <laughs> was on, underneath the number on the door and uh they were uh or sometimes beside the door so we said to the the hotel it's very frustrating um you know coming in and she goes well you just have to get on the phone and call us there's phones in all the lobbies or all the all the hallways and my friend said yeah i'll keep an eye out for the phone <laughs> right the funniest place i see braille is on the uh is on the keypad at the drive up machines the drive up atms i don't have an explanation for that <laughs> i don't i like no wishful offense thinking. To anybody. Pardon me? <laughs> wishful thinking <laughs> yeah no kidding right um and uh just even recently and it, uh we were i was at a um a hotel in edmonton at the airport and um I, they said, oh, all we have left is, the, left is the accessibility room. I said, well, I'm checking in. I'm, it's late. I'm checking in. It's probably, you know, chances are, I said. But, <clears throat> and, and Janelle knows this to be true. The accessibility room was on the second floor of a two-story walk-up, no elevator. Mm -hmm. And God, that's true. And so I took a little video and I sent it to the head, their head office. And I said, you know what? Accessibility isn't a word. It's, it's you know, it's a promise. So if you write, if you've got the accessibility symbol on your hotel and they, they drive to come to your hotel and it's on, and I don't even mean like a flight of stairs, it was a flight this way and then a flight this way. And, um, and me carrying my bags, I, I couldn't imagine if, you know, what there, what there was. And I just sent it out and I, I got, I heard back saying, that's not, that I think we have, I think, I think we have one on the second or the first floor as well. I think. <laughs> The manager should probably know. And now I'm going to tell you a little creepy story. It's got nothing <laughs> to do with accessibility or anything like that. Um, middle of the night, I'm asleep, which is generally when I like to sleep, or in the afternoon, <laughs> or morning, or after a big meal, or just right now. Another, <laughs> have a little over. I like to sleep a lot, uh, mostly, especially if I'm depressed. That's what I, I can tell <laughs> how depressed I am by how many uh, hours a day I'm getting sleep. That's right. Uh, so... I'm asleep and I hear a, a noise and a little bit of shuffling and a bang. And I just assume it's somebody going down the hallway because it's a, it's a, it's a cheaper hotel because I didn't want to, you know, I don't want the client to have to pay extra. So I said, no, no, I'll just stay here. I wake up in the morning and uh, the, uh, I'll, I'm going to actually bring it up because I'm going, I can do that. Uh, I, I wake up in the morning and uh, I look <laughs> where the hangers are. Now, these hangers, the hangers are like that. I don't know if you can see that. Do you yeah. see how it's hanging? And remember, it's backwards. So this is actually the other way through the... They weren't like that when I went to sleep because underneath... Uh, Joss, did you get this chance to see it? Yes. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So the... <clears throat> the um, they weren't like that because where the, the little thingy majugi and I'm not good at words, I should be. I'm gonna see how I'm gonna see how uh Thingamajoogie Cheryl, Cheryl works. Thingamajoogie. <laughs> the uh the, the the you open it up and you put your suitcase on it, that was in there. And then when I woke up, that I mean those hangers are like that. And so yeah. Da -na 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 so apparently it's accessibility to the paranormal, but it is not <laughs> accessible to those that may or may not uh need uh, a chair. I'm, I want to tell you this story, and it's and it's um, about getting angry for somebody else on behalf of somebody else. And it kind of bothers me when people do that. And and I and I, and I used to do it all the time. I used to get angry for somebody else on behalf of somebody else. Uh, so I'm uh, from Saskatchewan originally. This is where people could boo if you wanted to, but we are the same province. Mm -hmm. uh, we are. We're the we're the we're prairie provinces. We're proud. We're you know, one of us is friendly, and the other one has you know, land of the living skies. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, uh, I don't know if you've driven in Winnipeg or Manitoba. Maybe, uh, you know, learn a zipper merge before you put friendly on your life. <laughs> because, 
it's the, also the arson capital and the car theft capital uh, for the longest time. So I'll stab you and take your vehicle and start you on fire. Would you like a cookie? But uh, it's friendly, Manitoba. Uh, <laughs> Saskatchewan is land of the living skies, which means uh, bugs. A uh, million, <laughs> million of bugs. They put then that was on the license plate because land of the greasy windshield wouldn't fit is what I think. <laughs> I'm flying into a Regina from Winnipeg, which is weird because our airlines don't understand where Saskatchewan is in relationship to Manitoba, where Manitoba is. Originally. You can't just fly Winnipeg, Regina. You got to go Winnipeg, Calgary, Vietnam, Regina. Like it's a sort of a weird. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Cheryl to like, be able to catch it because I talk too fast sometimes. <laughs> Um, and uh, so I'm at the airport, and usually the airport in Regina looks like a 1950s science fiction movie. There is never anybody in that airport. You, you, you're afraid to turn on the radio. Thank goodness everybody's safely underground, right? It's just there's never anybody at that airport. No matter what time you go in, it's deserted, right? You expect to be walking through here, chuck, 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 ca, ca. from the horror movies. Mm-hmm. Now, this time it's packed. Because it is this Saskatchewan Rough Rider alumni game and induction to the Hall of Fame, and they've asked me to be part of it. So I was very, very blessed and happy to be there. And it's packed with people, and they have some they have some riders in the in the bottom there uh, as you come down signing autographs, right? All in mm-hmm. all in their bomber, you know, green, uh, Kelly Green, and and away you go. And one of them is Nave is is a friend of mine who happens to be uh, a black player. And uh, I hear a lady at the airport very loud go, I don't know which ones they are. All the black ones look the same to me. And I was like, oh, man. So I turned to my buddy Cleve. I said, listen, he goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to have a talk with him or with her. And she, he says, why? Tazzy, your skin is the wrong color to be even upset with that. I said, yeah, but I'm going to be upset with, for you. And that's when he taught me this lesson. I don't need people to be upset for me. I need people to support me. I need people to understand what makes me upset. But you don't have to use your heart to argue for me. He said, that's actually an insult to me. And I thought, oh, man, I didn't even think about that. I did not think about, um, you know, because what I've done there is, is, is put them in the child position where, you know, he can't or, you know, they, they, he couldn't speak for himself all of a sudden. Right, and I didn't realize. And then I heard her say this: "They should have name tags on them or something, so I can tell them apart at least." And I turn around to look at the lady and give her at least to give her a dirty look. And she's talking about the bags that are going around the carousel. Oh, she is not talking about Cleve or anybody or any skin color, which I realized made me the racist <laughs> because I heard what I wanted to hear. Uh, all black. I I just just like, and then I said, and I, I, but I said, you know what your problem is? And she goes, what? And I go, you need me to help you find your bag, obviously. What's your bag look like? (laughs) Hand to God, this is true. She goes, there it is. And it's dark red. It's not black at all. (laughs) The, um, oh boy. And and it's funny that when people see somebody that, 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 how do I, how, I'm just, uh, my words, it's not, I, I don't know how to say it. It's, uh, my brain just, uh, my brain just went for a second. Yeah. I want, I just want to, when somebody is, 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 has whatever, I, I hate the word disability. I hate that word a lot. Actually, my shirts that I, I got made for a, a class, it's on the back, it says, there's more to me than just what you see on the front. It says, never diss my ability. And I had some pictures I wanted to show you, but I can't, I can't find them. Uh, right now um but uh when somebody is 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 you know uh, con- I, I i hate the word confined too janelle and i were talking about this oh you're confined to a chair i'm like no nobody's confined to a chair right there's no confinement right it's just that's my mode of transportation that's how i get around either by you know by by using my mouth an electric chair using my arms with with a with a manual chair right it's a tool for freedom. It's a tool for freedom. That's exactly what I have written down here as well. Is a tool for freedom. The only thing that confines us is the government a lot of the time, right? Because they think we all fit in that same box. We all fit. Here's the deal. I'm not going to pole vault, right? 
you can <laughs> I mean, you go, I'm Tazzy pole vaulting my but it might be a hobby of mine but you can't make that I mean, i'm telling you it's not because i don't know what the tensile strength of a pole vault is <laughs> but i also know <laughs> my teachers would see me and they would and, and i and, and this is this is gonna make my teachers seem like ah not good people <laughs> um, but a couple of them i know because i was the loud kid i was also the chubbiest kid they would they would you know they would they would treat me incredibly bad like i remember them making me do long jump. They signed me up for long jump. <laughs> not, I'd stand up right now, but I'm not wearing pants. But <laughs> I'm actually wearing shorts, gym shorts. Well, they're my shorts, so they're just shorts. But um, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, long jump, not so much long as deep, really. <laughs> and, it, and hurdles. They made me do hurdles. He goes, well, it'll build character learning to do hurdles first of all i was a 200 pound 12 year old kid hurdles right i'm, I'm trying to get over my life's hurdles let alone I'm real so hurdles <laughs> right i'm trying to get over the my, my own brain hurdles let alone physical and and ones that are put there to try to make me jump over they goes it's not demeaning you try getting people pulling hurdles off your arse at the end of the thing going oh <laughs> right I just went through them. I was a, I was just a beef side of beef. Bing, bing, bing. They said, "Oh, you have to make it look like you're jumping." I said, "I thought I was. I just, right? Gravity affects me a little more than you, sir." That's the way it works. Like, just make it look like you're jumping. Yeah, make it look like you're jumping. Well, here, if you can see sunlight under my feet, good for you. That's me to make it look like I'm jumping, right? Yeah. And, I, and, it, and it, it's, it's sort of, uh, I see this a lot too, where all of a sudden uh, people uh, who are confined to a chair, other people feel, or, or whatever your, your, whatever your uh, visual malady might be, right? Mm -hmm. You see, one this is, uh, and I'll try to, I'll put a note, I'm just going to put a little, I'm going to write something so I get back to where I need to be. But on a side note, which my whole life is side notes, by the way, anybody that's seen my show knows that. Side notes is my ADHD. Uh, <laughs> that's what it is. But we are doing a, a plebiscite one time, we being Chris Fonseca and I. And it was for a, a program that we produced for the Winnipeg Comedy Festival called uh, Best Medicine. Uh, I didn't want to call it Best Medicine because that's that's whitewashing the whole thing, right? I wanted to call it uh, Merry Maladies, right? Where we can, we all pay, poke fun of what other people see as our, our limitations or, you know, the, you know, Chris was tell, talking about his adventures in a chair and Kathy was talking about being deaf and, and Gord was talking about being visually impaired. And I was talking about being mentally ill. Right. And um, actually my, my opening line was, I went on stage, I said, uh, I, I, and you're supposed to have your opening line ready. You they, they need to know. But I said, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what it was going to be. I had no idea. And they said, no, you, we need to know. I said, I can't tell you that because, I have it in my head and then I get out and it goes up and it comes out and hopefully it's in the right order and hopefully, but uh, so they made me use a teleprompter, but they said, what's your opening line? I said, I don't know what my opening line is. I go to step on stage. I look over the producer. I go, I got it. And I walked out and I said, they told me to come talk about my mental Ill health, my mental illness. They said, come talk about my, your mental illness. It's going to help people. It'll help you. It'll help your son. It'll help a lot of people. And I said, I don't think I can do that. And then a little voice in my head said, Sure you can. Ask the toaster, right? <laughs> and that set the tone for my whole speech about mental health. The very first one that they allowed on TV was mine about, uh, called the Bipolar Buddha Set, where I just talked about my challenges. And some of the stuff didn't make it because they were very uncomfortable because I was very open about things. So we did a plebiscite after that where we all sat around and people asked us questions. We, we, you know, questions. And they were talking to Tanya Lee, who's a uh, dwarf she's I think three foot four or three foot five or something like that very so we're all up there and somebody said well what's you know what do you uh what are your thoughts on this and Fonseca said I have it easier than Tazzy does 100 percent I said dude, I do really I can run up a flight of stairs and he goes you're not running up a flight of stairs <laughs> <laughs> He says, you'll, you, you, he says, I know that you'll go down the stairs because weight plus speed equals inertia. But, you know, and that's, that was how we tease each other, right? And um, 
And uh, he said, no, people see my chair mm -hmm. and they know I have limitations. But Tazzy, they see you and they don't. They think you have no limitations. They think just because there's nothing uh, visually that they can see, it means that you've got no limitations. And I almost started crying. I thought that's a great way to, because I uh, was having trouble uh, at that time. This would be, I don't know how many years ago, many years ago. Anyway, we were having, uh, I was having trouble getting into schools to talk about mental health and I was getting in, you know, and, and, and I would tell people I'm depressed. Oh, what do you have to be depressed about? Or I'm, ang I'm anxious. What do you have to be anxious about? Well, a, first of all, because nobody seems to understand me, that's a pretty good one, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and my anxiety is is through the roof, right? And uh, we all know how good Facebook is for anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook is the petri dish for anxiety, I think, really do. Anxiety and anger, I think that's what... Uh, and I, and I, and uh, my anxiety is bad, and my old, my boys both have anxiety, and we we talk openly about it, right? And I think that might be the only. I think I've stumbled on because uh, I'm talking enough. I think I've stumbled on um, to what my uh, what my limitations is when it comes to accessibility, is that just people just don't understand that yeah. just because what you see. Like that same thing, right? There's more to me than just what you see. And in a positive and in a negative fashion, mm. right? You see these kids there at a, that are at school and they, they have a backpack of problems. Mm. They have a backpack of, of, of heaviness. So they act out or they don't pay attention. And all of a sudden, it, well, why, you know, it's their fault. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes maybe their mom and dad were like mine, were alcoholics and violent. Maybe they are worried about if they're going to have another meal. Maybe they have lots of things that you haven't thought about. So just like seeing somebody who has a visual uh, limitations, give people that don't have visual limitations what we should all have, which is the benefit of a doubt. Just ask questions, right? I can't hear very well. I had an accident a while ago and my hearing is, is, is really bad. My hearing is so it's so much worse than it was. My whole life right now is listening and then trying to figure out what rhymes with what that person said that fits the situation. Mm -hmm. The other day, some lady came up to me. Everything's the other day to a comedian. Oh, a, a, quite a while ago, a lady <laughs> came up to me and said, uh, you're awesome. And I said, oh, thank you very much. That's really kind of you to say, thank you for letting me know that. Lots of love from my family to yours. Have a good day. And the comedian, and then she walked away confused. And she looked confused. I mean, it was a, she was doing, I like to call the pigeon. <laughs> what just happened, right? And so the comedian that I'm with said, that was a weird way to handle that. And I said, why is, was that a weird way to handle that? And, and she says, well, you know, I said, well, I just, I just thanked her for her opinion. And I was, I was happy with it. She goes, what do you think she said? I said, oh, she said, Taz, you're so awesome. She goes, no. She said, Taz, you're an asshole. <laughs> Which, if you think about it, I reacted the perfect way for her to, she's like, ah, oh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. I, pre I appreciate your opinion. And I, I, I you know, it feels really great. Thank you very much. Lots of love. Have a good day. Thank you. You know, she's driving home going, uh, uh, the other part of me is like, why would she think that I was that? Why did you think she think I was such a, a you know, why would she, would she be upset with me? But I didn't have a chance to, uh, maybe it's self-preservation. I don't know. I don't know. Right. And somebody said, why don't you get hearing aids? Well, because it's been a very tough two years and I can't afford hearing. They're really expensive. Somebody, the one I looked at were like $4,500 or something. And, and I think that might've been each, like, I don't know. And I, my first thought was, well, can I hear with just one ear? Like that was my other thought. And then I thought saying, pardon me is free. So that's the, uh, and, and that's the other thing too, is that, that I, people, when, when, I don't know if uh, uh, people that are hard of hearing uh, feel the same way, but when, uh, and my family does it, and they don't mean to. I mean, I got a lovely, great family. I got a wife that loves me, and I got two boys. 
that are awesome uh, a high percentage of the time. <laughs> but I can't hear it. I go, pardon me, or I have to lean forward, or I say, say that again. And it's like people are getting frustrated. They get mad at me because I can't hear. Mm -hmm. Really? What if I went into anaphylactic shock? Would you be angry at that? You're just doing that for attention. Stop doing that, right? It's just something I can't control. Mm -hmm. And I know, and, and I know it's frustrating. Yes, I should, you know, I should go and 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 maybe uh, explore hearing aids a little bit more. And I just, to be honest with you, I don't want to spend the money. And I, I know that's maybe, and I don't know what it is. I don't know anybody else is in the same boat. You know, but especially when I have, you know, if I could spend that money and go to a school and teach people about mental health and things like that. So, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I've never, I've never, part of me. Gotta, they got to bring back those cones that they used to use in the Civil War. I do that. I do that. I do this every once in a while. And it helps. <laughs> people don't understand. It does. It does. It does. I do the oh. same thing. Well, you know what? Is that how my voice sounds? That's gross. I know. Hello. Hey. Hello. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that the sign for gross? <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh, I you know, like, I like the Civil War the guys. Yeah, they're gonna, they're, they're, and then later you can call people for the hunt. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? I don't know. The uh, It's funny. I went to get my hearing checked, too. And the lady said, there's nothing, according to my machine, there's nothing wrong with your hearing. And I said, pardon? And I wasn't joking. <laughs> I couldn't hear her tone of voice. Right. Yeah. Right. And it's funny. You should just. <laughs> I've got dyslexia as well. I also have something in my <laughs> eye, and I know it's my finger, but um, <laughs> the I have dyslexia as well. So people will just use the subtitles when you're watching a movie, so you don't have to have it so loud. And I'm like, I have dyslexia. <laughs> <laughs> I've never read as much as when I have watched a movie, to be honest with you. <laughs> I love the words they use too. A tinging sound or a they gets I love the, the descriptor things, right? Yeah. By the way, if you ever happen to be in a um, in a TV show, uh, never use uh, the descriptive uh, <laughs> never use the descriptive uh, what's it called this not like the descriptive services that you can use on the where it sort of tells you what's going on because I was in a TV show called Mixed Blessings and there's one where I get into a hot tub and it says extremely large man gets into a hot tub <laughs> like oh thank you so much <laughs> it was so Tazzy thank you um, <laughs> the um, Oh my gosh, my heart is just like hummingbird right now because I still am so anxious and I don't remember where I was anxious. That's where we were. That's awesome. So I was telling you that my boys both have anxiety and, and it can be debilitating sometimes, right? And um, I can't, uh, I, I talk to a lot of people that um, there's some people because my, my big daddy Taz and friends uh, is usually a fundraiser for something some you know something like mental health or, or things like that so there are people and we have a, we have great talks uh people that struggle with their their uh, their anxiety their sobriety their their mental health their, and 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 um a lot of them don't want to come out mm -hmm. because they're going to get judged they, they feel that people can see right into them people can see that um you know that uh, and, and I started talking, sorry, I didn't finish the sentence. <laughs> There's either no punctuation with me or no sentence ending. It just ends in the middle. But, uh, you know, I'll be talking away. Dee -dee 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 -dee. I mean to say something and all of a sudden I just go purple monkey dishwasher, right? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> but what, um, what, uh, um, what a lot of people I, I know, I've met a couple of people that are, are uh, they've lost their vision. Um, they've lost their vision uh and uh they're they're new to being visually impaired or they're new to being deaf and they the anxiety that they feel trying to mm -hmm. navigate a world right i have a friend who um who is now going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of his travel days and that's how he's going to travel right and he goes i don't like going to places because i don't know if my chair will fit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right he said it was easy. You guys all came over. We widened the doorways and we 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 made transition steps and we we changed it into a roll-in shower and and things like that. He says, but if I go somewhere, 
You know, I, I always go to the, the big box stores and I don't go to these little boutique things because I, I can't, you know, I don't know if I can go in there. So even if the, if, if the, if the, if the, um, how many times can I say if the, I sound like I'm trying to start my car in the winter. If the, 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 if if businesses would understand the amount of, you know, if you, if you make it about dollars and cents, if you make your store, your shop, your restaurant, your business accessible to everybody, they everybody will come. Pardon me? Mm-hmm. They will they come. They will come. If, if you, build you, build it, you build it, they will come. <laughs> if you modify it, more people will come. Right? And um, so he uh, he gets uh, he, he gets out more now. Of course, it, it's, the, it's the shop from be going from able-bodied or whatever the the term is to now having to learn to navigate a chair mm-hmm. right and he says it was he goes it was great for my upper body strength he said right mm-hmm. and so back to anxiety which is where we were uh we started this whole thing um my boys both have anxiety and and i was you know i'm very upset about that and not upset that they have it uh, I'm upset because I know where they got it from, right? <laughs> you see, the first time I went and saw a psychiatrist uh, about my mental health, and it took everything for me to go see a psychiatrist. Mm. People go, oh, you know, you're weak for this, and you're weak for that, and you're weak for asking for help. Well, guess what? The hardest thing to do, the most courageous thing that you'll do is ask for help. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had to ask for help and I went and saw a psychiatrist and I told him my, all my, you know, I, 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 I guess I'm bipolar. I, I have um, this and this and this and this. And he goes, well, I said, do you have any suggestions? And I swear this is true. He said to me, we'll probably don't have kids because we don't want to pass that damaged part of your DNA onto another generation. And he's a doctor. Mm. He's got a DR in front of his name and he's got letters after the name. He's mm-hmm. smarter than me. He's mm-hmm. way smarter. Than, but I found out that just because you're smarter than me does not mean you're wiser mm-hmm. than I am. Doesn't mean that you're not compassionate. I think doctors um, and uh, clinicians and they were first responders, um, they need to take a compassion course. I think they need to take a, a, an all understanding course. And, and so that you understand that when somebody is having a mental break, it's not up to you to make sure that they're back into reality. And, and it's not about exerting your power over that person. It's about keeping them safe and yourself safe, of course. So if so-and-so thinks that he's the Messiah and he wants to rob this you know, liquor store with a piece of toast because <laughs> that's what the Messiah told him to do then let them believe that they are that and get them under control. One of the first things they say to somebody that's having a meth uh, in in the, in the throes of meth is that, are you thirsty? Because they become very thirsty. They offer them a bottle of water and it de-escalates so quickly. Mm. Right. You see, but this doctor said to me, um, you know, you shouldn't have kids. Well, guess what? I'd already had one. So Mm. I thought I'd already broken some sort of rule. And I didn't know because I was freshly from Saskatchewan. I didn't know there was a time difference. See, in <laughs> Saskatchewan, it was 4.30. And in that guy's office, it was 1936. <laughs> right? Where they all of a sudden, eugenics yeah. and and that. You see, um, I know we're going to take a break here in, in a couple of a minute or two. And so I'll finish this story. We'll end with that story. And then I will, uh, I'll, I'll, when we're off air, I'll ask everybody how I'm doing and you guys can reassure me. <laughs> oh, pardon me. So my boys both have anxiety and my oldest one goes, how do you deal with your anxiety? And I said, well, I always say it can always be worse. And he goes, I hate it when you say that. I said, I'm, <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> pardon me. Apparently I'm allergic to my own stories. <laughs> Um, 
So it can always be worse. I said, well, I'm not asking the universe or the, the powers that be to make it worse. I'm just saying it can always be worse because the moment you say it can always be worse, your brain goes, I've been here before. This isn't, ha- this isn't the worst it can be. So guess what? If it's not the worst that it can be and, it's, and, 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 I, and I've been here before, I know, how to, I know how to solve this. I either build myself a ladder or sometimes you're in a hole and it's not really a hole. As my young son said many years ago, Daddy, is it a deep hole or are you just laying down? Mm. So sometimes you stand up, you're like, ah, it's only ankle deep, right? And so he goes, uh, my youngest one goes, oh, I understand that. We Beast goes, I understand that. And my oldest one goes, no, you, Josh, he says, you're, you're just trying to win points with daddy. He goes, no, it can always be worse. And my son goes, listen, what if you're outside and it's minus 55 degrees Celsius and you're wearing nothing but your underwear and not the underwear you got for Christmas, but the good stuff, but the stuff, the old stuff you're supposed to throw away, that's more comfortable. And a soccer player wearing frozen steel toed boots comes and kicks you right in the wiener, he says. How can it get worse than that? Without skipping a beat, my son says, is there a nail sticking out of the boot? (laughs) Because it can always be worse. But we're going to talk about how we can make it better. That's what we're going to do. I'd like to have, if you have any questions, we'll wrap it up for uh, 15 minutes. Go have yourself a uh, a health break uh, or whatever you need to do. I'll be be here. And uh, why don't we talk about how uh, we can make it better or... Uh, what you'd like me to talk about after and we'll come back and I'll turn it over to Janelle and uh, we'll, we'll see what's going on. Thank you very much, uh, Tessa and Cheryl, uh, for being ASL uh, so far. And I hope I'm talking uh, slow enough for you. <laughs> uh, because just to let you know, Taz, you are doing great. Don't stress out. You're doing wonderful. We're going to take a 15 minute break. And as Taz said, uh, think of some questions and what you want to know uh, about Taz. And I'll be asking him some questions about how <coughs> um, art centers or artists or audience members can make it more comfortable for people with mental illness to participate in the arts. Okay, mm-hmm. so we'll see everyone back at 1.17. Okay. Awesome. Enjoy your breaks. <laughs>
So we have about one more minute of a break and then we'll get started. All right, so our break is just about over. If folks want to turn the video on and we can start the Q&A with, uh, with Taz. No, I was just doing my hair. I'll be right there. Oh, <laughs> your hair. <laughs> Got sucked in. <laughs> well, I think what we'll do is I'll get us started with a question, but folks, you know, think of your questions and you can turn on your video and ask Taz directly. Um, so... I run an arts, orga arts organization. So I'm gonna kind of ask you a question from our point of view. Um, I'm always interested in what we can do to make both our audience members and our artists uh, more comfortable and welcomed in the space. So I'm wondering, mm -hmm. what can I do as an arts organization to make folks with mental illness and visible disability anxiety more comfortable? You know, should we do things like let you know the time that things start and end? Do you wanna see information ahead of time? What can I do? <coughs> make you more comfortable yes lots good <clears throat> no um <clears throat> pardon me i i just want to make sure there's nothing in my beard like a chicken wing or something from a, <laughs> um one of the things for me is 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 um having proper lighting and sound and, and 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 having a few meetings ahead of time uh so that it can put any anxiety uh aside one of the things that really is is um is frustrating. I have a client that uh, I have to do something for them this week and uh, early week, and um, they have gotten me no information. Mm -hmm. And I understand, you know, and it's, an, it's a fundraiser and things like that. And I understand that as an as an artist, I understand that, and as a producer, I understand that. See, when you're producing a show, you only have to concentrate on your show. But as an artist, um, I mean, this week it'll be you know in the next this week in the next couple of weeks it's eight nine shows so i have so much to concentrate on so open communication is best for us and actually reading the contract and saying okay you know i my contract is very it's it's very specific right i, I there's there's nothing that is not non-negotiable except for one thing no eating uh no i don't perform what people are eating it just doesn't. It, do, it just doesn't work because when you're eating, you can't laugh. Uh, we've actually had somebody choke, and we're like, oh, okay. And then they're like, oh, that guy's okay. Back to the comedy. We're like, no, no, it's pretty much over now to let you know, right? Uh, and it's just uh, mutual respect between the two. It's not my. It's when I walk in there, it's never my show, and it's never the producer's show. We are putting on a show for the for the people that come, right? Mm -hmm. And so. I try to take my ego out of everything. And I had to do this a lot when it was, uh, when we were, um, how do I sound this without sounding pompous? I was, I was getting paid uh, really well. And I was, I was having really big shows pre COVID. Then COVID came along and we were performing like we are now just to a, a computer and to uh, some web platforms that were not, ready for this and we had to stumble over it and um so people said i'm not going to do i'm not doing that I, i'm so used to playing for thousands of people i i'm not mm -hmm. going to do it. i went i need to feed my family mm -hmm. and my addiction which is making people laugh and feel good so i had to take my ego out of the equation i think if you take your ego out of the equation in anything in life uh, it's going to be easier with you you see the first time we had to perform uh in front of anybody I was at Rumors Comedy Club, which is my favorite club to play. But 
there was no audience and they hadn't nobody had really mastered zoom yet and nobody had uh so when i uh, i had to do that it was me playing to a camera with a couple of other comedians around and it and 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 uh there was some echoing really bad feedback echoing so they had to stop me and uh we had to try it again and then they had to stop me again and outside i'm like hey yeah this is awesome well, just this is the learning curve we have to do, and I I offered to go first because I was a, I was the most seasoned professional, but I wasn't uh, I wasn't uh, mentally uh, prepared for how devastating it was not to be able to hear people laugh, and I went on mm. and I did what I could, and and it was just it was terrible, it was horrible. I got to my car and I cried, I wept, mm. I I bawled. I was like, you know what, my career is over. This I can't do this anymore, and it's just and then. The, the my phone started making bling 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 i kept getting messages and somebody wrote it was hard to watch tazzy for you but please thank you do it again we needed this we needed this thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you so you see it was all about the, it's always all about the crowd and if you're in the crowd shut up when you want to heckle seriously nowhere where, where else do you heckle Right? I'm an artist, not according to the Canadian government, but I am an artist, Manitoba government, yeah. Uh, and I say that because uh, comedians are not allowed to apply for the same arts benefits in the, for, for the, on the federal level. And we're going to change that as a group. Uh, Janelle and I are for sure. We're going to start. I, I should mention, I did check with Canada Council for the Arts, yeah. and they do consider comedians artists. Oh, that's weird. Because a lot of us, a lot of the arts grants that we were, were available were not, were denied to us. Oh, so I will. I will talk. We have a union now. <laughs> yeah, we talk because I contacted them on your behalf. I contacted oh. Winnipeg Arts Council, Manitoba and Canada Council. Oh, that's verify, awesome. And they all said yes. Um, that's, that's 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 awesome. That's great news because when during COVID, when these we, when these right. When they were available, I got denied. I was denied, denied, denied. So, anyway, it might be a new addition. Uh, that's it. Yeah, don't mad, make Tazzy mad. But um, <laughs> back to heckling. Uh, if you feel like you need to say something, here's what you do: uh, don't. <laughs> but it's 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 very important. I mean, and people heckle or people get upset or if you're at a, if you're at a comedy show, just keep quiet. We're not there to talk to you. If you're there to talk to your friends, you pick the wrong venue. It's happened a lot at, 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 at rumors or, you know, a table gets uh, noisy and we have to, you know, we have to say something to them. And all of a sudden the acts, the artists are the ones that are, are, um, are, are the monsters. And we're like, no, no. Right. You don't go to a baptism and go, hold them under longer. You know, you don't, you don't do that. You don't, you know, nice dress, mister. When you're, you know, or whatever at a play, you don't yell stuff out at a play at a movie theater. You don't go, that's Batman. Like you don't yell stuff out. Right. That's so it. this, <laughs> we're in Esther Hazy, Saskatchewan. I was there. And uh, one guy loaded, just liquid. I don't know how he was still awake. And he starts <laughs> yelling stuff out during the show. And I said, I, 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 you know, I teased him a couple of times. I always be nice, be nice, be nice. Um, and then he just, I'd had enough. And I just go, listen, I just got over COVID last week. I, my brain is very foggy. I'm trying to, we're trying to raise money here. And you uh, heckling me is going to throw me off my game and I'm not going to have a good show. And they're going to blame you, even though it's my fault for not have for having, a fuzzy brain so can you just like just don't yell stuff out to me if you need to you can even put up your hand and i'll talk to you for a couple of seconds if you need me to talk to you but when mm -hmm. i wrote this i didn't know you existed so it's kind of a one-man show right and he looks at me he goes oh yeah okay yeah sorry <laughs> and he never he never heckled the rest of the time right of course he was passed out some of it but <laughs> i'm just saying well that so, really illustrates your point about open communication and how important that is very much so right you know and the other thing that you can do is is uh just like you said it's just open communication and in a timely fashion and understand that uh when we ask for certain things on contracts it's not it's it's my contract is all based on uh what i think is best for the audience mm -hmm. 
and what is going to make life a little bit easier for both of us. And uh, what I think is necessary for me to make sure that you have a show that people come back to for next time. Right. Our job as artists, no matter what the artist is, is to make sure that that venue is popular the next time because you'll get hired back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have, there's a lot of us versus them. There's a lot of, you know, all oh, I, I, you don't, they don't want me to talk about this and they don't want me to talk about that. Well, that's good. I hear that from comedians quite a bit, actually. You're ruining my art. No, your art is creating your words, right? Is creating the visual part by using your words. Your art is creating the jokes and things. And just like an artist does with a paintbrush or a pencil. Now, if you are a great artist with a paintbrush or a pencil or whatever, and you make visual art and you're great at, you're massively great at landscapes. Those landscapes are beautiful. Look at that starry kind of night. And you're also really good at news. That's realistic. And those are great. But somebody hires you and said, listen, we're in a crazy uh, conservative neighborhood. No nudes, please. But you can display as many of your... Um, many of as many of your landscapes and your portraits as you want just no nudes and you still decide you're going to put some nudes up well mm -hmm. you're you're damaging it for everybody right you're showing that you're not a team player you're living mm -hmm. with ego you're you're making the uh, you're making the person that hired you look bad and you're offending the people that are paying money to come and perhaps enjoy your art again and again and again and again so it's got to be a very symbiotic relationship. There's a word I have to look up, but I think I know what the meaning is, right? <laughs> um, and, and I think it has to be a symbiotic relationship between producer and, and artist on, on all levels. Yeah, that makes total sense. I love the idea that not only does the art, the audience have to be respectful to the artist, but the artist as well also has to be respectful to the audience. That's right. You see, if you if you uh, if you see that your your what you're talking about isn't going over, you can plod f fast and furious through, or you can go up oh, and just see. Because not all, you know, you know, when people mm -hmm. ask me how clean my show is, I said I've gotten probably thirty standing ovations in Winkler, Manitoba, very highly religious community. But I have no problems teasing them about that as well but respectful the first time i played winkler was right after they had um because winkle a lot of people don't know this but winkler used to be could i look any more like a monkey when i do that it's <laughs> um winkler is a very um a very conservative right very and it was it was a, a dry town for a long time there was no alcohol in the city limits so i was there the first time i played i was there when they had just had the vote whether or not to leave you know like to to have uh, elk. and so I brought out a blank piece of paper and I said oh I got the play I got it right here I said uh, oh do you want to let uh, do you want to let, allow uh, alcohol within the city limits of Winkler yes or no I'll keep driving a Morden for my booze <laughs> and it was like one two three four seconds right and then I went uh that might have been the line and I went Wah! and they cheered because you can say almost anything to anybody if you say it in the right way. Right. And it's important to talk to the, to the artist about and make sure you have the right artist, right? There's been a couple of times where uh, I've lost events or gigs to somebody and I said, oh, do you mind me asking who you hired? And I'll never disparage anybody. But when they told me who it was and it was for Winkler, I said, you need to just check out a lot of their videos. That's all I said. Well, can you tell me? I said, nope. It's not my job. It's you as a producer yeah. to make sure. Yeah. I will not disparage any comedian because, I mean, it's, it's not my job. As a booker, because we're also bookers, my, my job as a booker is to choose the right act for the right, for the right uh, venue because uh, a, lot of, a lot of bookers don't do that. They're just like, okay, here, this is what I think you should have. And a, a lot, and not I shouldn't say a lot, there are some out there that are worried more about money than repeat business. I'm yeah. all about relationships. I'm all about forever and ever, amen, right? Randy Travising everything because I want to make sure that um, in three years you ask me back or you call, use my agency to make sure every year. And I think it's open, being open and honest and always work with a contract. Always, always, always work with a contract because a contract tells both parties what's expected of them. I have an envelope and it's here somewhere uh, that says $1,800 envelope on it. And here's the story of a lovely lady 
which is funny because we're we're on Zoom. Um, <laughs> and uh, so what uh, what happened was a guy asked me what my fee was, and I said it's two thousand dollars. And he says, "Okay, two thousand. Send me a contract." Yep. I said, uh, "Okay." And he said, "Did you send me a contract?" I said, "No, I didn't send you a contract. I work with a handshake. This is many years ago." And he goes, "Okay, so it's two. I said, "Yeah, it's two. Two. We talked about two the rest of the time." I get, I do the, I do the event. It's an amazingly great success. It's a fundraiser. He hands me an envelope. His driver takes me to the airport. That's how the guy was very, very wealthy. His driver took, took me to the airport. I open up the envelope. There's $200 in it. So I call him back. I said, I'm sorry, there's been a mistake. He goes, yeah, I know. I said, pardon? He says, yeah, I know. Where's your contract? I said, well, I, we, we, we agreed on two, 2000. He goes, yeah, but then I said two and I'm mistaken. And I thought it was 200. And I went, I said, but you knew it was 2000. He goes, I know it was 2000 and you know, it was 2000, but you didn't give me a contract. So you go home and you write $1,800 envelope on this. And you remember this lesson and always, always work with a, with a contract. And I was furious. No I kidding. was furious, but he was right. And I worked with him until he passed many, many years, many, many times over. He actually said, do you want to do the event next year? I said, yes. I said, but I want to, I, I want 2,500 so that you can make up for ripping me off. And this one, he goes, I didn't rip you off. You ripped yourself off. Had we had a contract, he said, you ever not going to use a contract again? I said, I'll always use the contract. And up in my, I think it's upstairs in my office. I have an envelope that says $1,800 envelope. And that's the same envelope. Hmm. That's some good advice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's true. The contract protects the artist and the organization. Right? I have a contract with my best friend every Every, you know, every time I have a, I have a co, I have a cohabitation with, with my wife because it, we need to know we're on the same, on the same page always. I mean, there's, I, I, I doubt very much we'll ever need that cohabitation agreement, but if I pass and, and, and something happens or, or if, or if, you know, I get there and there's no, you know, there's not proper lighting or what do you mean? You don't, you didn't have a, you don't have a sound system. You don't bring a sound system. I go, no. And that's happened. I've flown, mm -hmm. I've flown uh, to, I think Vancouver. And they said, did you bring a sound system? I said, on the plane? No, I did not. I, it says right in the contract. So we scrambled around and found it. We were all very stressed for a little while. But the only times I've ever been treated completely terribly is by somebody that is never, uh, that we don't have a contract. Or they get the show as a, as a, like I used to give myself away at auctions and stuff. And um, uh, <laughs> we, we sort of don't do that anymore because we've been treated incredibly badly by mm. people getting a free show, right? Right. and that all that all helps with my anxiety because i am very and i'm you know, my ocd is like this too and here's a little thing too that people don't realize the obsessive compulsive disorders association of manitoba used to not be open regular hours <laughs> i know i think they did it on purpose <laughs> yeah that's exactly that's exactly your meds aren't working let's see if they're working you sure you're a procrastinator society <laughs> no that totally answers my ta my question taz that was great i wonder does anyone else have any more questions for taz any burning questions this might be shorter than we think <laughs> um i do i have questions anybody out yeah. there that anybody out there that that they can tell me um how what are your feelings on, on what i've said about you know asking questions are you comfortable with people asking questions i mean and people uh <laughs> It's not a big secret. They can see your that it, you know that you're in a that that you might have a, a visual uh, you know a visual uh, limitation. Do you mind if people ask questions? Right? Do you mm -hmm. mind, or would you rather educate? Right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm curious about that. I and what bothers me too, and and it, it, Jen, you and I talked about this. You know, you and I talked about this. Oh, I'm so proud of you going out. You, oh, I feel so sorry for you. I'm so proud of you for going out. Oh, good for you. Oh, oh, oh. Why? Yeah. Why? Well, it. You know, Chris and I, uh, Fonseca, he wanted to get a haircut. So we go to get a haircut, and we we sneak out of the event and go get Chris a haircut. The girl sees you in the next chair, and I swear this is true. You're gonna get a haircut. Can you say haircut? And Chris is like, says something very rude to her back because he goes, "Why would you think I'm? I'm. You know, do you think I've got?" Some mental challenges? What do you mm. think? I'm a, a giant like child in a chair? Right? Mm. It was just, and it, I, it really, really bothered me. I didn't say, I was, I was almost bleeding from my tongue because I was biting it so hard, right? Mm. And it's, it's, it's funny that, 
they um they uh people see you and you they they see these limitations right Mm -hmm. well how about i'll let you know what my limitations are yeah Mm -hmm. i'll let you know that you know stairs are going to be a challenge right but anything upstairs in my head it's not going to be a challenge yeah do you see yeah, I, I think it's I think it's important. I mean, I've, I, we had a, they had me on um, to do a show one time and it was all about um, it was all about uh, hiring practices. Right. And I said, you know what, if, if would you hire me if you didn't know I was in a chair or did, would you hire me if you didn't know I had this or that? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I Absolutely. think it's. Well, I was going to say in answer to your question about whether folks feel comfortable asking questions, I can only answer for myself because I also have mental illness. And um, when I was younger, I would hate if anybody asked me anything because the stigma in our society is that if you have something wrong with your brain, it's your personal it's something to do with your character that's at fault, right? Yeah. Because of the yeah. idea of the chemicals in your brain. So once I got over that stigma, which I still to this day, you know, fight myself with, I want people to ask me questions. I want to tell people what it's like. I want to have other people with mental illness feel comfortable talking about themselves. And I find the more that I'm honest and the more that I say out loud what's going on with me, well, all of a sudden, all these other people are saying things and, you know, and saying, oh, well, this actually happens to me, too. And then you get those conversations going and mm-hmm. conversations and relationship building for me is the basis of advocacy. You know, if you want to change people's minds, you're going to do it through communication, through building those relationships. At mm-hmm. least that's how I feel. Well, um, you know what? You feel included. Yeah. Which is an important part of inclusion. Yeah. Well, and also too, with the question asking, as long as it's respectful, yeah, yeah, that's what it comes down to, right? If someone says to me, you know, oh, you, you have mental illness. Do, do you mind if I ask like what, what you, you deal with? Absolutely. But if someone says, oh, you got mental illness. Oh, you must be crazy. eh? Or not safe around children or just things like mm-hmm. that. Well, that's not respectful and i'm not going to respond to that and exactly because people get their information about mental illness by watching csi and law and order and stuff where they're like people with bipolar disorder kill people all the time and i had one guy go hey you're bipolar do you you kill people i go i'm thinking about it right now like seriously (laughs) joking and and the name of some of the the diagnosis sounds scary for example i have borderline personality disorder which Mm -hmm. sounds crazy but all it really means is that i'm extremely empath- empathetic i take on other people's energies and mm. i have problems with c- controlling my emotions um mm. it doesn't mean that i don't have a personality or i have two personalities or exactly. you know that's my yeah yeah, yeah. And- people have to understand that oh, i'm sorry I'll, i i interrupt but i uh people i have to understand that our mental illness isn't a flaw in our character it's a flaw in our chemicals exactly mm-hmm. Go ahead. I, I, I um, talked over your No, talk. I was just say, talking, thinking about Janelle and um, and even if you did have multiple personality yeah. disorder, like what does that really mean to somebody right. else, right? Yeah. So absolutely. And, and, I, you know, yeah, we it, have to be. Uh, we ask for help so people will listen. Yeah. We don't need a diagnosis from it. We just sometimes we just need to unburden ourselves, and we we'd like you to listen, and that's all we want. And be it, be it physical pain or emotional pain or psychotic pain or 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 pain of the soul, right? Or just a sadness. Mm-hmm. When we ask for help, we don't need you to say, "Well, uh, this and this," and we don't need you to. We need nothing more than you to listen. And we've lost our ability to listen. So many people are waiting for their turn to talk instead of learning to listen, right? And, Mm -hmm. and it's, it's very important and I'm okay. I mean, I am so open with my mental health uh, struggles and triumphs because that's very important, right? Even today, like Janelle knows how this freaked me out this whole, because I got inside my head. There's lots of room up here. Uh, you know, open the door. Hello, 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 hello. Echoey, echoey. Lots of hidden doors. Yeah, don't open that door, don't open that door, don't open that door. <laughs> it's got a picture of my dad on it. Do not open that door. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a cartoon It's a cartoon door. 
And, um, you know, people say, why do you do what you do? And it's because I get I get messages from a lady from a lady that said um, you getting emotionally naked on stage Mm -hmm. um, emotionally. I have to make sure you know that (laughs) because that's a whole different show. (laughs) It is a different show and everybody gets turned off a shrimp. But um, (laughs) anyways, I should say the second thing that popped (laughs) in my head. I think I made the ASL lady laugh. That's awesome. (laughs) I think I made this laugh. Um, the, uh, okay, okay. Uh, where was I? I, I, um, I had an idea. Uh, why do you do what you do? She, the lady said, you getting emotionally naked on stage and being so uncomfortable makes me more comfortable with mm-hmm. myself. Absolutely. And my job, my goal and my job is to talk myself out of a job so that I can just, I, I can go back to being a comedian and I don't have to be an advocate for mm-hmm. mental health. I don't have to be an advocate for accessibility. I don't have to be an advocate for those that are different because guess what? We're all different. And I don't mm-hmm. have to be an advocate for children because these are commonplace. That's what we want. That's what the this this whole series is about is making a uh, difference a commonplace. Mm-hmm. I'm different, you're different, Absolutely. right? Yeah. And when the government understands that the, the vernacular that they use and the contracts that they have are so specific or they're so generic right that it doesn't include everybody yeah and it's okay you're not going to like everybody not everybody's going to like you so why would you expect everybody uh, to like everybody and vice versa but like i say to the kids it's always about being kind it's okay to get mad it's okay to be sad it's okay to be frustrated with the situation and not like the person you're talking to but be kind abk always be kind right Mm-hmm. and be kind to those that are being uh kind to you is very easy yeah <laughs> but being kind to somebody that's not being kind to you that's hard yeah accept that challenge mm. and we forget to be kind to the most important person in our lives which is us yeah you know i always say stand up for yourself and often stand up to yourself yeah, absolutely. And I mean, to kind of mm. go off what you're saying, I mean, this is a bit of a controversy in the disability community, but I am, I wouldn't want to get rid of my disability. For me, it I, it has so many benefits as well as so many downfalls, right? Mm. It's not just all negative. For me, I find because I have these diagnoses, I can make friends easily. I'm very empathetic. Mm. I can understand the situations. And if I didn't have that mental illness, well, I might be a bitch, you know, I might not be as nice (laughs) as I am because I feel like I have that superpower. Um, And you might not understand others. Exactly. Yeah. When I understood my started understanding myself, I understood other people Mm -hmm. and never forget that you opening up about whatever struggles you have, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, whatever, and being open about it will change lives. It opens space for others to talk. That's right. Mm. And I was in uh, Sioux Lookout one time, last minute gig. Uh, I went there and I was like, ah, do I, you know, it was, it was inconvenient to get there, but I knew for some reason I knew how to get there. And I often ask the universe for a sign that everything, that I'm on the right path, right? You see, I always believe that the universe is on, I, you know, that every, the universe has a plan for me. Not always well, the stuff's happening. I'm not going to lie to you. Not always well, stuff is happening. But at the afterwards, you look back, you go, oh, this couldn't have happened if this and this didn't happen. And but right. so I'm on stage. And I said to the universe, because I, I live with self-doubt. Is it okay that I said that? Uh, I live with <laughs> self-doubt uh, all the time. I, I, think I'm a, I think I'm a piece of junk a lot of the time. I think I'm not effective. I think I'm 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 a, I'm a sham of a human being, but because I listen to the negative things that people have said to me over the years, that's what lives in my head. Not the uh, you're well, you know, you're going to be okay. You're doing a good job. Even I'll get a standing ovation. I'll come off stage. I go, I guess that was okay. And they're like, you've got a standing ovation. I went, yeah, but I can only see where I screwed up. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, right. So I'm on stage at Ask the Universe, listen, I need a sign that this is what I should be doing, this mental health talk, right? 
get off the stage and uh, I, I think it's illegal now, but I hugged people back then. And uh, <laughs> everybody was, I don't know if COVID, you're not allowed to hug during COVID. Just hold your breath for a couple of minutes. Um, I don't know how long the hugs are <laughs> for a couple of minutes. Oh my gosh. Um, so anyway, get off and, and we're talking, we're hugging, we're talking. And I could see a fella sort of off that wanted to come forward. So I just, I just sort of, I walked towards him without actually walking towards him. I just, and he stood there. And he, 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 I said, I said, oh, I'm going to talk to you. I waited till the crowd and I talked to him. And he, and he said, uh, the only reason I take my medication is because my, my wife and my doctor make me. I said, okay, fair enough. I said, it's a good start. And, and, and I go, do you need a hug? And before I even got the word, uh, I, he grabbed me a hug and he held me and he's holding mm-hmm. me. And he goes, I said, brother, <laughs> your, uh, your uh, wife and, and doctor are keeping you alive. Mm -hmm. i'm gonna say this without trying to break down and he said Mm -hmm. no taz you just did that he said i'm just gonna go home and kill myself today because i'd had enough being like i am because i felt so alone and um you told taught me that you can live with this and you can thrive on this and it's not a death sentence medication isn't a death sentence right Mm -hmm. so he said i'm gonna go home and tell my wife that I was going to take my life and her and I are going to the doctors, the hospital, and I'm not leaving until I get help. And he walked away. And I said, I'll be right back. (laughs) And I went into the room and we're back behind the doors, you know, the hotel hallways that are like Narnia or whatever back there. (laughs) And um, I just burst into tears because I needed that. I needed that validation and i'm crying and i felt like an idiot because i'm crying and then i hear behind me <gasps> and i look and the the organizer and the producer were, were all crying right yeah. yeah because you can make a difference by just listening you can make a difference by just being there you can make a difference by telling people how hard it is it's not easy mm-hmm right? It is not easy. And there are going to be moments that don't make any sense. Like I did a show and I got a standing ovation guy in the front row in a chair stands up out of his chair. And I'm like, what just happened? He goes, I can stand up. You're not a healer. He says, well, you're a healer, but not like that. I'm, you're not. A, you know? So it just happened, right? So there's going to be times in your life that are awesome. Yeah. And you put those in your heart so that you remember them for them when the times aren't awesome. And that's what we're, that's what life is. It's ups and downs and you can put your hand out and hopefully somebody will help you up or somebody, Mm -hmm. you know, or somebody, you put your hand out and somebody can pull you down. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do in this life is, is, is teach people. One of the, I have something that I'm starting called mental health, M E N T E L L health. Mm -hmm. Which is men talking to men about mental health. And the tag is going to be men helping men helping men survive being men, because we we we've grown up in such a toxic society. Grow a pair, be a man, all that stuff. Yeah. Apparently, men are born with this magic tool between their legs that makes them completely impervious to all emotion and stress. And no, it's not true. Do you know how many times I've heard this? I don't want to go on a medication. It's going to change me. I'm like, good. Good. That's what, that's what we want. Thanks, Lord. I mean, if you have a headache, I don't want to take any medication because then the headache's going to go away. No. Right? And they'll put you, there's all kinds of medication. It's going to take, it's going to take a long time, sometimes six, six eight weeks before you realize the medita- medication is taking um hold and then it might not even work it's 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 everybody's a little bit different clonazepam is about this big it's about the size of an ant's testicle like it's tiny it's really (laughs) tiny and they go this is for anxiety and i'm like okay i don't think that's gonna work for me i have big anxiety i don't know (laughs) if this is for the occasional oh oh." no i have "Ah, i have that kind of mentality and i'm, I'm glad <laughs> you're able to sign that <laughs> i didn't know how to that. But I, I need a tyrannosaurus rex size <laughs> suppository free sitting you know keto obviously um and um but they said no no my doctor said take this when you have anxiety just put it under your tongue mm-hmm. so i'm like this is useless this guy's a tool like what is it blah blah right yeah so i uh i'm i have a meltdown and I mean a proper, 
meltdown. Like, I'm life is terrible. I can't. And my anxiety, and I can't breathe. And I'm, I'm trying to one, two, three, four, five. It's not a lie. I'm a piece of garbage. So I take that pill and I'm like, uh, under my tongue, right? And uh, I'm like, I can't do it. About three seconds later, I'm like, puff the magic dragon <laughs> lives by the sea. And I take two and I'm like, I see fields of green, red roses too. Hey, is that a unicorn trying on my shoes? And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's all about doing things to take you out of your comfort zone so that you can be comfortable being everywhere. Because we all deserve to be ourselves we all deserve to feel self-love we all deserve to have um us ourselves surrounded by people that care medication yeah. will help doing that cb you know cognitive behavioral therapist cbt and cbd works really well i use omega-3 uh, i use oh uh, i use uh, uh vitamin d i use cbd and, and it's, it's it helps but you have to take that first step and it's the most terrifying step. It is, it is so hard to ask for help. It is, but it's so funny because if you break your leg, you yeah. have no problem asking yeah. for help. Exactly. You start right. feeling sad or weird in your mind. You, know? you have a heart attack. Yeah, no problem. But you have a broken heart. Right. You hold that in. It's the word mental. People focus on the mental part and they don't focus on the illness part. Well, people don't get your mind is a part of your body. Exactly. It is a physical disability. It, it literally is. is. But because our mind is what we think with and what we we place our kind of existential self in, yeah. we separate it from the body. But it's not. Well, well, and it can break down just like anything else. I'll riddle you this. What if we called it a brain disorder? Would people be so... Uh, right yeah it's a brain disorder oh you say mental illness somehow we're supposed to be able to stand on your own two feet and pull yourself up by them bootstraps well yeah i can't see my feet and i don't know if i'm wearing bootstraps it could be a flipper and a rollerblade i don't know what's down there right now <laughs> well that whole teaching kids grit and like uh, what does that mean I, teaching kids grit how how to how to how to how to how to man up? How to grow a pair? Oh, how to, how to weather the storm? It, it's a it's a big thing in the self help industry, like it, oh. grit, like, and it's it's like impossible, especially with neurodiverse kids. Like, I, yeah, that's what we need to teach kids. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with you. Mm. Yep. A label is nothing more than a label. A label is just. It's like you say, are you Italian or Irish? Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you a he, a she, a they, yeah. or a two spirit? It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I'm Tazzy. Mm -hmm. I need help sometimes. I give help sometimes. I have questions that I'm afraid to ask. So if you give me an environment where I'm comfortable asking questions, where I'm comfortable sharing my fears, I'm not, I'm going to become fearless. Yeah. It doesn't mean I'm not going to have any fears anymore. It just means I'm going to be fearless in my pursuit of my own happiness. And people mm -hmm. think that that's so, um, people think that that's so greedy. Well, how you're greedy. How, how, you know, how do you, you know, think of only yourself? No, no. Mm -hmm. You don't always have to think of yourself first, but like uh, many people have said this, but I, it was funny. We were, I was talking to a lady on the plane the other day and she goes, well, you know, I, I, you know, my sister doesn't understand that I need time to myself. I said, what did they just say on the airline here? Mm. Put your face mask on Put first. Put your face mask on first. Or, as one of my favorite celebrities, Paul says, how the hell are you going to love anyone else if you don't love yourself? Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. I am so, every day I wake up, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm grateful. There are days when I can't wait to go back to sleep and there are days where I don't want to go back to sleep. And I just want those days where I don't want to go back to sleep right away. Mm. But my, ment my, my, my brain is such an arse to me. <laughs> I met, I met a, 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 full disclosure, during COVID, through a, through a, through a divorce and, and, and things like that. 
And I, I met a woman in my life who, Lisa, you've met Lisa is uh, Lala. I call her Lala um, because I'm a child. <laughs> Uh, with a MasterCard and a great uh, comic book collection. Um, but uh, I didn't want to get involved with her until she knew everything that was wrong with me. We've known each other forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. We've known each other for a long time. But I said, listen, this is the way it is. And even last night, uh, because one of the clients didn't get me the information, I had a meltdown. I'm like, I can't handle this. And she went, yes, you can. I go, you don't know what I can handable. And she let me rant. And she goes, actually, I do know what you can handle. So I push you a little bit, mm. <laughs> but I don't like the way your brain treats you sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see? And so I, I communicate much better with her and, and, and much better with myself and much better with others because I know, I know yeah. that I'm going to lose my stuff every once in a while because my brain doesn't allow me to access parts of my brain to make me calm again right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and anxiety and and uh, excitement create the same kind of chemicals in your brain it's just how do you label it right yeah. so what i want to teach kids and adults you're not in a wheelchair you mm -hmm. use a wheelchair you are not you know uh, deaf you can't hear you are not bipolar you have bipolar disorder. I am right. not my diagnosis. I am a fella that has a diagnosis, mm -hmm. right? I think that's such a great point. And we're almost at the end. So I think it's a perfect point to stop at. Your disability or whatever you have isn't your defining characteristic. It's just a part mm -hmm. of you. I think that's it's a perfect place. It's what place. makes you interesting. Right. It's a perfect right. place to end. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Taz. We no have worries. so enjoyed listening to you and for everyone watching. Of course, Cheryl and Tess, our interpreters, thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate you guys so much taking the time. And Taz, you want to leave us with a, some final words before we sign off? No. Okay. <laughs> no. Everyone have a wonderful day and enjoy the sun. <laughs> here's, here's, here's what I want you to do. Never let the ignorance of a few dissuade you from seeing the love of many. Be mm -hmm. kind to yourself. And when you're not feeling loved, try very hard to see yourself through those that love you, through their eyes, because they see the true you. You only see your flaws sometimes. And they yeah. see you as not flawless, but lovable.